Greetings from the historic waters of Las Olas here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. My name is Ryan Alexander with Denison Yachting. Today, I'm gonna to be taking you on a walkthrough of a 2019 Azimut 60 Fly, one of the most popular boats on the water. Azimut has always been a staple in virtually any marina that I've traveled to in the world. But as of this last year, it's become more and more impossible to get away from their increasingly popular 60 series. The reason for this is not just because of how the yacht looks, but also because it's a yacht of the future. She has virtually every navigation and security system that you would find on a bigger boat. From her sea keeper to her pod drives, piloting this Azimut is remarkably easy. This tried and true propulsion method makes getting in and out of tight waterways just like these a lot less stressful and takes the guesswork out of docking. Before I get into detail, I wanna show you a few spaces on board that I think are special, places that'll keep you busy year round. The first of which are the exterior spaces. Directly above me is the flybridge. This flybridge stands out because it's a leader in its class in terms of volume and amenities. It's got all of the seating that you need as well as a fully equipped wet bar. Then down on the main deck aft is an alfresco dining area that elegantly greets you every time you step on board. Her third great exterior space is the bow. When this area is set up for entertaining, it rivals the flybridge in terms of space and layout. Later on in today's walkthrough, after we finish showing you the exterior spaces, we're gonna step inside and show you her interior, spaces like this airy salon. With comfortable seating and contrasting joinery throughout, there's a lot that makes this yacht feel like a luxury Italian villa. Her three staterooms are filled with calming textures that you may have a hard time walking away from when you have to start your work week. This motor yacht in particular is listed centrally with David Johnson. Now David spent decades running super yachts all over the world as a captain. And now he's taken that know-how and he's applied it to the brokerage market, helping buyers and sellers navigate what can be tumultuous, confusing waters. Having traveled around the world with him, I can assure you that there are few brokers willing to go as far for you as he will. So with all of our housekeeping out of the way, let's have a look, shall we? Let's kick off today's walkthrough of the 60 Azimut here on her Teak Hydraulic Swim Platform. Taking up the majority of the space back here is a Williams 325 Turbo Jet Tender. And while it's not included with the sail, it gives you a pretty good idea of the size tender that you can fit back here. Now as we turn our attention to port, we see her shore power connections. Over here we also find water hookups for rinsing off after a swim or washing down the deck. Looking over to the starboard side, built into the stairs, is her passerelle. Moving just inboard, molded into the transom, is a lift-assisted storage locker for lines, fenders, and for water toys. And then right next to this is a watertight crew access door. Making an immediate right turn to starboard, we see where a pair of crew berths would go. Currently, this space is used for storage. That's why you don't see any mattresses. Looking to the port side, we see the crew's ensuite head and shower. Our next stop is the aft deck, which is intricate and elegant, a real gem in this size range. The primary use of this space revolves around the dinette. This area has a stone tabletop with teak wrapping all around it. This is surrounded by U-shaped all-weather seating. The coolest feature back here is a windscreen that drops down behind the settee. This not only provides shade, but significantly cuts down the effects of the wind as you're back here relaxing. Looking now to the port side, we see one of two capstans back here for tying off in the slip, as well as one of two boarding gates. Also found on the port side is isotherm cold storage concealed in a cabinet that guards it from the elements. Looking to the starboard side now, we see the aft deck's second capstan and second boarding gate. Moving inboard, there's a molded in staircase leading up to the flybridge. And then mounted into the stairs is a control for the aft deck's fusion stereo system. 
Covering this entire area is a matte finished hard top that's been integrated with LED lighting, speakers from her Fusion stereo system, and a CCTV camera. Just below the aft deck teak sole is the engine room access hatch. Down here are three features of note. The first are her essentially brand new Volvo Penta D13 engines. These 900 horsepower engines give her a cruise speed of 28 knots and a top speed that exceeds 31 knots. The other two items of note down here are her Cummins Onan generator, as well as her Seakeeper gyroscopic stabilizer. Where her exterior lines are aggressive and pronounced, her interior takes on a completely different, more wrapping, softer aesthetic. Immediately on the port side, we see a plush white settee beneath a large hull side window. This is a great place to sit and take in a movie. Opposite to starboard is a love seat and the salon's entertainment system. Immediately behind the seating is not only a window, but a high-low TV that raises up and lowers down. Just aft of this is the boat's primary electrical panel. This is your first stop anytime you use your boat. And then found overhead is a Bose surround sound system. Immediately adjacent is our next stop, the galley. What I like most about the look of this simple galley are how the rounded edges seem to wrap the entire area up as a separate space. Now let's take a look at her galley appliances, starting with a four burner Miele glass cooktop. Directly above is an exhaust hood and directly below, she has a combination oven, also by Miele. Just aft of this is a large fridge with a freezer above. There's even additional cold storage forward for all of your wine bottles. Directly across from the galley is an oceanside dinette that immediately wins your favor with a near floor to ceiling view of the outside world. Here, there's seating both forward and aft of an expandable high-low table. Our next stop is the lower helm. I love the way this helm presents itself and how it shares the same radial look that we just saw in the galley. This is a helm of the future. Not only is every piece of equipment state of the art, but every component is arranged ergonomically. Facing the wheel are a pair of adjustable bolstered bucket seats. Sitting here, hand on the wheel, would be a great way to spend the weekend. Some of the tools that you'll be using to get to and from islands like Bimini are twin Raymarine multifunction displays that display virtually all of the yacht systems. And then in between these is a Volvo Penta engine monitor. Next, situated on the right side of the wheel, are engine controls and a joystick that makes the most of her pods. Just beyond this are switches for the nav gear and running lights, with a zip wake auto trim just beyond. Below this and just beside the wheel are a control pad for her Seakeeper stabilizer, a searchlight control, as well as her radio. Now, let's check out the guest accommodations. First, we have the master. It's the aftermost stateroom and takes up the full beam of the boat. And here on the starboard side is the berth that extends away from a horizontal midship hull window. The light pouring in from the starboard side illuminates the port side storage that you're looking at now. First, there's this large ovular banquette of drawers that also conceals the TV. And then there's a large amount of hanging locker storage just aft of this. Outside of the hanging lockers is a bench seat that you can use while you're getting changed for dinner. And then all the way aft in the master is her ensuite with a shower stall. Her second stateroom is forward on the starboard side and has a pair of side-by-side -side berths. Outboard is a large whole side window lighting up the stateroom. The kids will love this cabin because of the larger than average TV and great entertainment system. Stateroom number three is the VIP all the way forward in the bow. To both sides of the berth are where you find this cabin's storage. To starboard is a discreet TV and opposite on the port side is the entrance to the ensuite. 
Now let's jump directly overhead to the bow. On yachts in this size range, the bow is valuable real estate that when used properly can see a lot of use. This is one such design. Without changing anything, the lounging area features U-shaped seating around an expandable cocktail table. And then forward of this is a sun pad that can convert into additional seating. And then as we move all of the way forward, we come to her ground tackle that has foot controls. Her windlass draws up a delta anchor into a stainless anchor chute. Leaving here, our final stop is going to be up on the flybridge. Few aspects of the 60 are more compelling than this elevated venue. It offers a great view as well as several options for spending your time. If you were to ask me, the best way that you could hope to spend time up here is running the boat at her port side helm station. Equipped with a pair of helm seats, the captain and mate have access to a plethora of navigation tools, most of which were found at the lower helm. There's a soft lounging pad on the opposite side that's just under the hard top, offering you a cool spot to relax in the shade. Moving aft, we come to an alfresco dinette that's made up of a stone table that's surrounded by plenty of comfortable seating. And then looking to starboard, we see her wet bar and grilling area. Below the grill in the sink is an isotherm fridge, and then forward is an ice maker. Moving all of the way aft is the latest improvement that Azimut has made to this size range. An open lounging space free from all distractions and finished beautifully. The final feature I want to point out is her hardtop. This large hardtop offers a ton of shade to this upper deck until you open the convertible sunroof. Finally, fixed on top is the radar mast where we find a pair of KVH domes. So there you have it, the 2019 Azimut 60 Fly. I hope you've enjoyed your time on board as much as I have. If you have any questions about this boat and that you want a spec sheet or you'd like to see her in person, we'd love to make that happen for you. And also, if you're looking at getting into the buying or the selling market, I cannot recommend David Johnson more highly. Thanks for joining us.